fishing a club match today on the River Thames. It's the uh, what I was practicing for the last few days, and it's 10 minutes into the start of the match, and I haven't started fishing yet. So I need to uh, I need to get on with this. I'm just going to ball it on the pole line. Intention that I'm going to fish a flat float here. Start with that. And then I'm going to chuck the feeler out into the, not into the flow, but into the crease, I guess. And that's how we're going to start the match. Well, I must admit, it is a bit late. So we'll just tidy that up. Because we can use that later. Now I can get the feeder ready. Just like this. So we're not going to mess around at this today. I'm told there's bream to be caught in these pegs. So I'm going to go straight out for them. I'm going to fish a nice big worm. Tail cut off. Top to the pinky. And in this, I'm going to put a little bit of a caster. A pinch of hemp. A few live maggots. I've not done this style of fishing before, everyone saw that on the last match. And I've not managed to practice it, I've been practicing fishing the pole, but I think we can cast Lazy Chuck. It'll take me about there. That's at the bottom. Make my boat. And that's us set and running. It is a fairly simple rig today. Just got a, um, should that's it, worm and cast, no worm and pinky there, one meter hook length. Just a guru speed bead and twizzle boom. A couple of number eights, just so it sort of kicks it away a little bit. Um, and a 60 gram feeder, that's it. In terms of ground bait today, it's um, uh, Vantage Baits River and uh, mixed in 50-50 with uh, Census Roach. Which I'm finding is quite a nice mix. Either 50-50 or two thirds, one third. I've been fishing for half an hour. I've fed the pole line and I'm going to fish that later with a flat float. And I'm just fishing the feeder for at least the first hour. So I'll get some bait out on that line too, and then I'll have a look on the pole if I'm not caught on the feeder. I'm in a known bream area, so you know it's all about big baits today. Worms on the hook, and um, loads of particles to try and keep them interested. So that's the plan. There's an indication on the tip, actually. That was very fishy. I'm fishing for big bream today. It's three pound plus. And I've got a four ounce tip to accommodate the fact I'm chucking the 60 gram feeder round full of bait. So um, hopefully the bite indication is going to be reasonably okay. I'm normally fishing a one and a half ounce tip, so I, I can't say that I really know. And carp generally pull it round, so. Just sort of see how this pans out, but it looks like there's a little indication on the float on the tip, which could 
confirm there's some crave. Right, well, well mine stink said hit that. Because that was a bite. <clears throat> that was definitely something more positive than a little tap. And something's attacked the something's attacked the bottom of the worm. Yeah, the bottom of the worm's been attacked. Could be a cray. I've not caught enough crayfish to know what happens. But let's keep going. Casters, hemp, pinky. Nothing dainty about that 60 gram feeder hitting the water, is there? <laughs> it's not like chucking a little method to an island with a little plop. <laughs> it's like something falling in. No, no fish, but that was definitely worth striking at in my mind. and spin out so worms double back over on the hook what's that I don't know maybe I should <coughs> excuse me maybe I should be hair rigging these shorten the piece of worm again look like a bite worth striking you know Keep going, bit of caster, more hemp, more pinky. <clears throat> See, got having something. To sort of teach yourself feeder fishing. <coughs> <coughs> Excuse me. I've decided to do it on you know match conditions. <laughs> I have to put that land in there, out there somewhere. Oh, that side's better. That out now versus trying to grab that later. I'm just a little bit concerned about how much worm I've actually got. I've got a lot of soil and not a lot of worm. To chop some up the start, but not that much. I 
Okay, right. Timer. 12 minutes past. So yeah, teach yourself, feed a fish in, live in a match. Which I think is the best way because, you know, my general view as an angler is you get better by fishing against people who are better than you. Um, which forces you to be more critical of your performance, make you think harder. If you didn't win, why didn't you win? And if you didn't catch the same out of the pegs that they caught, why haven't you caught? Um, that's definitely an indication on the tip. And my son says fish every time I come, bring it in. And the answer is a uh, leaf. But I think I've picked that on the way back. And the verdict on this worm is... Looks undamaged, but it's definitely a bite. Definitely a bite. So I have a serious concern about the amount of worm that we've got. It's not enough. No, I've brought a match pack and it's not enough. It's not enough to fish chop worm and to put it on the hook every chuck. I've got this box of lob worms, pot of lob worms, but I guess there's probably about 10 worms in there. Some more, so I'll dump that in there as well. Let's dump all that in the same pot, and I guess I can fish a segment of the lobworm on the pole if needed. I think that's all of them out of there. I think that's another leaf stuck on there. So, yeah, more worms required. It's bouncing, but I think it's a leaf. So I can do a chunk of a lobworm on the pole. Yeah. Fish half a dendrobina on the feeder. Otherwise we're gonna run out. That's a bite. That's a bite and that's a fish on. Okay, my next door neighbour's just looked up. My son shouted yes. A slab, that's what we want. Oh, there we go. <laughs> that's what we want to catch, isn't it? Some of them. <laughs> Some of them. <laughs> uh, how big is that? Uh, I think that is probably the best side of. Oh, I think 
That's a four pound fish. Yeah. So we're going to same again. Take the end of that ginger bean off. Top it with double pinky, I think. Just to try and keep that worm from coming off and to stop it doubling over. And uh, let's keep going. Caster. Hemp, some pinky, right where there's one bream, there's always another. <coughs> I haven't seen him catch to the left of me. Yeah, fishing matches makes you a better, you know, pleasure fishing angler. You know, when I take my kids out, you know, we catch a load of fish. At other venues, it's not because, well, it's partly because the venues are good, but it's partly because their dad's fished them for years in competitions, and that's a bite. That's a better fish. That's a better fish, son. Here's a fish for you, Salty. Let's hit that straight away, look at that. It's going down the river, that is. Oh, it's a thumpy, thumpy breamy. <laughs> I told you that worm's all right. A different worm. We've still caught this fish. It's not as big as the first one. I haven't got it in yet. They've quite like crazy these bream, look. Get in there, get in there. Get in there. <laughs> That's what we want. Look at that. Some more of them, please. So I'm very happy now. We're approaching what? Are we halfway through the match? Yeah, halfway through the match, 12 o'clock. We're fishing till 2.30. And I'm not anticipating a fish. I've got my hand on the rod. And I'm feeling very confident about catching more bream. Which from a state of mind point of view is really positive.
I was fearing that by halfway across the match today I would have had no fish. I wouldn't have known whether to... Oh, see there's a bite and I can't hit that, but that's a big fish. Just thump. And, um... You know, not knowing whether to sit on the feed or to sit on the pole or what to do, but... There's no debate in my mind, it's sit on the feeder. I can't tell whether there's a fish or not, <laughs> the feeder's so heavy. But I've missed another bite then and that's confusing me. But just keep doing what we're doing then, if we've got two bream and we can have another two then... I think that could put me in a really good position. You know, let's work off the principle that people may catch a bream or two bream during the day. That's the that's the sort of threat. That's always the threat to fishing the pole that someone does what I've done today and catches a couple of bream. So I've got my two bream, and now I've got another two hours to catch another two. So if you break that down into sort of what's going on here. We've caught two bream in the first couple of hours. We must be coming up for nearly the third hour. There's my watch. Half twelve. Three hours are gone, two hours left. So in these next two hours, to do really well in this competition, I would assume on most days, you've got to catch another two fish, another ten pound. You know, the two bream and a few bits. If I could just catch some silvers right now and just put some fish in the net. You know, and turn, you know, get another pound or two pound of fish, that'd be good. I just think that fishing the same line is the right thing to do. I don't think switching it's the right thing. It's a little bit further, that is. I've got to concentrate on this, I think. So I don't have another line to fish. See, what could happen is the, the shoal could be sitting further up the river and it comes into the peg and he might have a bream of chuck now for the next hour and there's nothing I can do about it. You know, right now I'm sitting, getting no bites, catching no fish. Try and get a little bit more aggressive with the chop worm. I've got to get a fish out of this lot. Start bringing in the chop worm, I think.
Get in there. Get in there. Number three. So, I changed that smaller hook length back off again. Let's get back out quickly and catch our fourth that we wanted to get. So everyone, it's a bit of a exciting finish. That's frame number three. I wanted to catch four at the halfway point. I'd had two. I said two more would be good. I've been getting the odd bite. If I put some maggots on, I got a bite. I couldn't hit them. Conclude it was roach. Um, I still believe that's true. So I think there is a load of silvers out there. But I did decide that it was going to be now or never. And I needed to catch some bream. So I was prepared to chop more of my worms up because time was running out and put more chop worm in. And I think that, that has made a positive impact to the bites that I'm now getting. That's what I think is really helping me get these bites. Just to do a little summary end of the match type stuff. Um, I've drawn peg 18 on the upper moors today. I was told it was favoured for bream. I know they catch bream up this area, but I've never seen the pegs and I don't really know how to approach them. I fished a 60 gram feeder, um, about just over one, th mm. I don't know, maybe near towards halfway across the river actually. In the flow, but it's not the fastest flow. Um, over the five hours, um, I've had three bream, um, I've had a bunch of silverfish, um, and I've had a load of bites. Um, I don't know if I fished it as well as I could have, should have. Not too sure, I'll speak to a few people. Um, and obviously I'll check the way sheet and see how people have got on. Um, I don't know how people have got on around me. I think I've beaten the guy to my left. Um, I've not seen him catch, um, but you know who knows. There's a bunch of anglers on today, and we're um, we're quite a long way down the river. So I'm going to pack up. Um, this is the sort of either the end of a little four fishing day series, really. Um, I fished a peg further down to understand how to try and catch fish in these sorts of conditions, and then I've drawn a peg that was completely different, <laughs> and I fished the feeder all day long. Um, but I think that was the right choice in these pegs and um, we'll see how I get on later on. I'll post the way sheet on and uh, as ever, if you're watching the stream, thanks for watching. I appreciate that. If you're not subscribed, if you can hit that subscribe button, I really appreciate that too. That'd be great. So thanks for watching um, and we'll see how we're doing. Catch you on the next one. Ta-da.